is actually missing a pen. You know why? Because this shadow over here, it keeps, at least for mine, it keeps coming out in one piece like this. I know it's horrendous to see. Which K Beauty brand has ever done a blue eyeshadow? If I could be an eyeshadow palette, this would be a fantastic representation of myself. Does she release the same five rose gold eyeshadow palettes? Yes. But you guys seem to really enjoy the first part of my eyeshadow palette collection And now we're moving on to part 2 which is the bottom part Where we contain a lot more of like K-Beauty eyeshadow palettes So they end up looking a little bit safer for the daily wear And of course there are more recent purchases as well So you'll see all of it in there Without further ado, let's jump right into it I had to get a cushion to sit down on because unfortunately my butt is not as big and fat as I like it to be so there's no natural cushion because after the first video, my butt hurts so badly. Anyway, if you haven't seen the first video, this is where we keep all of the eyeshadow palettes over here so this is normally right next to me after I like film my videos and stuff like that. The first part we actually did run through all of these eyeshadow palettes over here aside from these at the end, these are Pat McGrath and Glamonatrix Cosmetics eyeshadow palette. This one's a little bit more fragile, so that's why I keep it in a line, horizontal, flat position. And for today's video, we will be going into this over here. This is heavy, it's actually quite weighty. This was like 30 over palette, and this is probably more than that, so I will speed through it a little bit. Let's start off with the roll above the ones, the fragile ones I didn't get to. This is actually. Um, three Pat McGrath eyeshadow palettes. The first one that I ever got was the, this one over here, number five. And I thought this would be the palette for me because I thought it was more neutral and, you know, like a pop of red and this yellow green kind of thing was so unique. I bought this during lockdown actually. And I don't know why because I never really used it. But whenever I did use this palette, especially I love the combination of wearing this rose gold and this warm brown. It looks so good and I always get a lot of like, what are you wearing? It looks so nice and shiny. So I know a lot of people say that Pat McGrath stuff is like really expensive. You can normally get like Black Friday discounts and the sale is really good on her website. This one is Utopian Dream. It's more like a pinky purple. And then like the sale will be like 30-40% off her usual like price which is a great discount. So that is normally when I will buy her stuff. This one is my favorite right now. This is definitely way much more cooler compared to the number 5. Moonlit Seduction, this is my current favorite. I reach for this a lot actually and you can see there's quite a bit of a dent in this one over here. This silvery white shimmer shade is really nice as well. I think because this is leaning much more cool tone and it's like smoky and it's very easy to just use these shimmery topper shades on top of any other eyeshadow looks as well so it goes together really really well so love this i think it's worth the money i don't know what people say and like crap on her about i mean does she release the same five rose gold eyeshadow palettes yes but the quality of the eyeshadow palettes are really really nice this one's from glaminatrix cosmetics and this is the nocturnal palette i think this is already discontinued as a palette but the individual shades are still available if i am not wrong or the last time i checked and this palette is super fragile i remember but it actually reached me in one piece but i accidentally just kind of like when i placed it down like this the shade Milky Way actually cracked on me, so as you can see, it's kind of like messy a little bit. I had to repress it, so very unfortunate. And some of these shadows were actually kind of like rising out from the pen, and I had to like press it down as well. So really, really unfortunate. I love the color story. Very like vampy, but colorful, a little bit grungy at the same time. So this is one palette that I like to use more often, but because I always have to be very careful with it, I can't be so um, rough. Is it? Milky Way is actually one of my favorite shades. Like, do it. Oh my god. Like a black and purple. It's so stunning. Oh my god. Okay, anyway. Told myself, no swatching. I just want to show you guys how good it is. Let me count how many eyeshadow palettes there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. 13, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 41, 42, 43, 44. 44. 44 eyeshadow palettes. 
I have issues. This is the Pemograph Celestial Divinity Palette. This was a holiday eyeshadow palette. And I bought this only because it was on sale in Sephora, like locally. And I was like, oh my god, this was originally like 110, 120 Singapore dollars. And now it's like, I don't know, was it like 60-ish kind of thing? I was like, oh my god, a steal, a deal. And then I never used it. I think the reason why I never really reached out for this is because the jewel tones, which don't get me wrong, really pretty. It's just that they are really deep. And the fact that most of them are shimmers, which I like actually, there are only one, two, three matte shades. And they are also pulling quite deep. So I think I would see this working really, really nicely on somebody with a deeper skin tone. But somebody like me who's like, I would say rather like fair light-ish or light medium, then this will actually pull really deep on me. And it's not the most wearable for daily wear when I go to the office. It's a little bit, you know, a little bit too much <laughs> as well. So I never really use this, which is a pity. I'm still going to keep it though. I feel like this is a more curated version of that palette. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills and Jackie Aina collaboration palette. And this one, actually, I didn't buy this. My friend gave this to me very kindly of hers. So I actually never really used this as well. But I have experience and I mean, just use the ADH, this type of um palette format and normally the shadows themselves are really really nice i think this is definitely way much more curated and the fact that jackie Aina herself is a person of color with deeper skin tone these colors will look really nicely on her or people around her skin tone flower nose you guys know <laughs> that flower nose is super popular right now but this is actually one of their older releases and they had a cool tone version of this and a warm tone version of this so I have the warm tone version of this right now in my hands. I don't think this is available anymore, so I won't talk about it too much. But basically, you have this whole row of shimmers, and the quality of this is really nice as well. It's not like something, you know, that's like cheaply made or whatever. I think since like day one, the quality of their stuff is really, really nice. This is so nicely pigmented, and the shimmers themselves are reflective. If you guys have tried Flower Nose right now, like their recent collections, like the Mermaid one or the Strawberry collection, if I'm not wrong, let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts on them. This one over here is another gifted palette. <laughs> the Urban Decay Naked Honey Palette. So, fun story. I actually never owned any naked palette. Not the one, two, three. I've never owned any of those. This is my one and only naked palette. And it's this one over here. Ironically, yellow colors like this, warm colors, they are not the most flattering on my skin tone. So, sadly... I did use this for like a little bit, but then afterwards I didn't really use it. So you can see it's quite, you know, fresh in the pan. <laughs> There's not much um, usage out of it. So I just never really use this. I think right now, if I were to use it, I would probably use for like this and staying in these colors at the bottom over here. These very yellowy colors, strong yellow colors. Uh, they're very warm. I, I don't think I would use this. So... I keep this because it was gifted to me as well. So by a friend, so I just, I just you know keep it for memory's sake. Uh, back then when the industry custom palettes just came out, this was all the hype. So I got this over here. It's like a you know custom palette, very cute, significant divot in there. The other shadows, uh, aside from the brown, not so much. The blush is actually quite pretty. Why didn't I use this blush more often? It's cute. Oh, but it's a little bit barely there kind of thing. I think I got this in like, what, 2018, 2017? Not the most, you know, best quality blushes back then either. I think nowadays the blush formulations are way, way better. I have four of the Daily Blurring Eyeshadow Palettes from Wake Nick. So these two over here are the older versions before they reformulated and repackaged it to something like this. And this one is the daily blurring one, which honestly, this is actually quite warm tone or at least like neutral. And then I have the lively blurring one, which is the cool tone one over here. Surprisingly enough, I actually reach out for this a lot, even though I own the old, the new version, sorry, the new version of the lively blurring palette. Let's take a moment to compare. What do you guys think? Did I know that I was going to buy duplicates of this palette? Yes. I went in knowingly because I just want to find out what is the difference between the two formulas, especially the old and the new. And honestly, color story-wise, I think I still prefer the 
older version because I just feel that even though this has more shades, like the new version, the old version had a little bit more curated uh, color story to it. There wasn't as many repeated shades as compared to the new one over here. So that's why I don't really... Actually, I haven't even used this. I'll be honest. This one, I haven't even used. Maybe like one shadow. But I still reach out for this a lot. I guess the downside to this palette over here is the fact that there are only two shimmer shades. And normally for me, I like to have a little bit more variation for shimmers. And the shimmers for this, it's either very, very deep. This deep plummy kind of color, which you know, can be cute for a moment. If not, it's this kind of like pink that's quite muted and cool tone. Which honestly, this color is good for daily wear. And I actually wish for this a lot. You can see in the pal. Quite a uh, divot in there a little bit as well. But you know what? The color story is quite cute. I don't hate it. This one, the blue core blurring one, I actually did do a video on it. So I'll put a link up above in the cards. You guys can go and check it out. But this is basically something a little bit different compared to a lot of standard K-Beauty eyeshadow palettes. I found this to be like revolutionary in a sense. Because which K-Beauty brand has ever done a blue eyeshadow recently? Like, I think barely any. So I was really curious. And this color story was something different. Are the colors also very repetitive? Yes. But I was going to give them a chance, give them a shot. And I just test it out. So I think that the colors like these, especially this very like light tones over here, very repetitive. I feel like they didn't need to have these colors being repeated so many times. Because on my skin tone, even though I'm like a light, light medium, I found that only the deepest colors actually pulled off on me. Maybe this one over here, and like that's about it. So that's why I would admit, eh, okay, it's something new, something fun. I know I saw Wig Make recently did what their lime eyeshadow palette. I think that is also really fun, something very different as well. So I give credits to Wig Make for actually being or trying something out very different. I have two Pat McGrath quads over here. The one that I'm wearing today, actually, I have on my eyes is. Ritualistic Rose, this one over here. And I have the shade, this shade over here. This like rose gold, but there's like a really strong yellow gold sparkle flex in it. So this one, this one is really pretty. This one is Celestial Odyssey, the Lux Quad. I think, yeah, the pens are way, way much more smaller. So, and this is, you know, very like, it's a little bit more on the very warm tone a little bit. So this is a bit, not really my speed, not really my color story, but I did get this for for free as well. I think it was gifted to me. Somebody gifted it to me. Okay, not the brand sending it to me. I wish I wish the brand was sending me things, yes. But most of the times, a lot of the times, I buy things with my own money. If not, my friends really kindly give this to me. So, um, yeah. I don't see myself wearing a color story like this. Maybe back in 2016 and 2017, I would wear something like this. But right now, this color story is not really my speed, so... Maybe I'll just give this to one of my aunties or something who, I don't know, they don't even use the makeup. So I don't even know if they know how to appreciate this. Or maybe I'll just keep it on hand and just, if somebody wants me to do their makeup, because recently a lot of my aunties have been asking me to help them do their makeup. So maybe I would go for something like this because I think aunties would normally go for some color story that's a little bit deeper. And the quality of the shadows themselves, they're good, they're great. Yeah, they're still the standard like Pat McGrath ones. Although they're not as like wet and shiny as those that are like special shades. Look at it, this is good. This is still good. This next palette though, on the other hand. Um, oh, hi. Oh. <laughs> this one on the other hand was gifted to me in PR. Very grateful. This is my first ever eyeshadow palette that was given to me in PR. This is the none other than me rose palette from 1028. And this is how it looks like. It's a my pen palette. Very strong, peachy, rosy undertones. Because on me, the colors pull quite peachy. It's leaning a little bit on the warm tone side. So the colors, not really my thing per se, respectfully. I say this with a lot of love. But the quality of the shadow is really nice. I think they have other colors available as well. There was a wheat one, if I'm not wrong, and a chocolate one, if I'm not wrong. This one was more, I would say, daily friendly. Nothing too heavy about this palette. I think you can make it 
quite glam actually because look at how deep this color can be and the shadows themselves very good quality to be honest oh, oh no i just oh i just dipped my dirty finger into it wait hold on took off the top layer and tried my best to salvage whatever i could get but anyway and it just performed way above my expectations so this is a really nice oh this is at a drugstore as well at least in singapore so this is a really, really nice drugstore eyeshadow palette. Really good quality for the price as well. So we got this palette from Peach C, and this one is the Soft Mood Eyeshadow Palette in Soft Brown. So I think Peach C only did two color variations of this. One was like a very like, peach heavy kind of eyeshadow palette, and this one that it's a brown. And the reason why I enjoy this palette so much is because that it's not super warm as compared to a lot of eyeshadow palettes in K Beauty brands, which when they try and do like a night pen brown palette they end up pulling very warm so this one is actually quite neutral and then the fact they have three shimmer shadows which is light tone medium tone and a dark tone which is like the perfect balance so i felt that this palette was really good and i highly recommend this for like beginners and i think this is actually quite a slap on uh, palette not many people actually talk about pc also in general so i genuinely like this palette a lot i have two anisha palettes and yes you're seeing one of them is actually missing a pen you know why because this shadow over here it keeps at least for mine it keeps coming out in one piece like this i know it's horrendous to see <laughs> and then i have to just like slowly press this back in and then wait for it to pop out another time i think it kind of like dried out in the pen already but you know what it still works it really does still work <laughs> it still works okay i i I'm not really sure why is it like this. This one is in all of glitter and you know Alicia is like super popular. And then I have this other one over here. This is the all of brown eyeshadow palette. Fortunately, this one over here, there's no eyeshadow pen popping off kind of thing. In general, Alicia is well known for like their glitters. And right now they have some other products as well like their cushions. And I think, what was the other one? I think their lip tint, the dazzling lip tint was really, really popular as well. But the eyeshadow palette was what made them like put a mark on the K-Beauty market so that's why I got these two and I don't really reach for these two palettes generally but when I do it's usually for a particular shade for example like this type of like taupey brown with a little bit of that blue green flex so pretty and then the fact is that this Anai Pen palette glitter the particle sizes in this Anisha palette they are of different sizes so you can really get various looks, textures, and finishes as well. This is another underrated palette, the Hamish Glitter Eyeshadow Palette. I think this is in Coral... Ah, Coral Berry, yes. And... I don't know, I bought this on YesStyle, it was there for a hot minute, and then it just disappeared. Very unique in the sense, like, it reminds me of the Coral... This, like, particular eyeshadow palette from Greasy. I don't remember the name of it. But it was also a knife pen palette, and I think it was a similar vibe to it, but this was definitely at a lower price point. Again, you got various shades of glitter over here. It's a very shimmery palette. I think this is definitely more one of those palettes that you would add on together with another eyeshadow palette that you have in your collection. I'm not sure if I would want to have this as a standalone. I don't remember having any issues. I mean, shimmers are kind of hard to mess up. I really like this. Oh, this color. These two colors are really cute together. Oh, I might want to use this color in my next eyeshadow look, actually, or maybe for work. This is super soft and sweet, actually. These are all of my daisy eyeshadow palettes. I actually have one more, which is the chocolate one, but I can't seem to find it. I'm not having it here, but I think I kind of misplaced it. Alright, I gotta go and find it later on, but these are all my daisy palettes currently. I have this one in Milk Latte. This one in Sunset Moly. I don't know how to pronounce that, but like this kind of like warm tone peachy sunset moment. This one in Violet Knit. This is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes to use because this is so up my alley. Almond Vanilla. This one is the ice cream collection as well as Blueberry Sorbet. This is the purple cool tone version of it. This eyeshadow palette screams 50 shades of beiges. This comes in really handy when you don't want to do an eyeshadow look but you kind of want to cover up the discoloration on your eyelids. This does the job really really well surprisingly because i also wonder like why did i even buy this eyeshadow palette because this is so boring but surprisingly it actually worked out really nicely so i'm really surprised by this like pleasantly surprised if i could be an eyeshadow palette this would be a fantastic representation of myself oh my gosh this palette has everything i ever wanted for a cool tone purpley eyeshadow look as everything and even a chunky glitters like this that are oh, so beautiful 
I adore this palette so, so much. And I think the embossing is so pretty as well, and I don't want to ruin it. Sunset Lily, I didn't really use maybe some of the shimmers. But other than that, the pens itself, not so much. But I must say that between the big formula, which is this one over here, and the regular pen formula like this, I actually prefer the regular pen formula like this. This one is top tier stuff. The six shadows themselves are so nicely pigmented. There's no awkward bunching up or whatsoever. And it just applies on the skin so nicely. They don't really have to like fuss about or whatsoever. And the shimmers themselves also are like next level like wet kind of thing. I know my hands are full of glow pad right now, but look at that. That is beautiful. Now the reason why I say that I prefer the regular pen shadows over the big one. Literally just now when I opened this palette over here, a chunk of it just came off. So this is already like crumbling away. And they may seem like they are like a dome or a big formula, right? They actually have a little bit of that clean touch to it. So if you are a beginner, I'm not really sure how I would feel about recommending this particular palette. So there's a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to this particular formula from Basic. It's not the most beginner friendly. Definitely takes like some skill or knowledge of knowing how to use makeup. So I would recommend the standard uh, my pen shadows. I feel that almond vanilla is not as crumbly as compared to the berry sorbet one. Berry sorbet one, you can see this shade is like coming apart already. Oh my god, be super careful with that. But this one, you can see it's not as crumbly as compared to that one over there. Again, it has this like cream matte texture for the mattes themselves. And I think that almond vanilla is formulated like slightly better compared to berry sorbet. So I think the whole idea of it though is really, really cute. I love I love the concept of it. Don't know if you can see anything because all you can see now is just glitter on my hands. This is definitely a nice to have in my collection, but definitely not a must have. I think the must have is the regular night pen palette. I had to take a quick break. Anyway, this is the Rom and Balea palette in Strawberry Mood number two. And actually, I got this in Korea and I actually saw this before I even went to Korea last year in May. So I wasn't really attracted to it when I first saw it online, but when I saw it in store, I'm like, ooh, this is actually, maybe I should just get it for, for the laughs, for the long, you know, that kind of thing. And it's a very, very light palette, I must admit. Like, this is a really light, pale, pale light. But you know what? I actually bring this for travel. I literally can't see anything. But yeah, I actually bring this for travel because I think it just, um, I wouldn't say it, is it an like easy palette to use? Yes, but it's so light and bendy there. It gives the right amount of lightness that I need. Because sometimes when I go traveling, sometimes I just want to really... I want something on my face. But I don't want too much, you know? <laughs> I know I know I'm sounding a little bit ridiculous right now, but you know, it has a blush, a little bit of eyeshadow. I'm not say super deep eyeshadow, it's like medium, medium dark at best. And actually the glitter over here, this one, I'm not sure if this is recommended as a highlighter or what, but normally I will use this glitter shade as an eye topper. You know what? It works out pretty well for me. If it's a one and done, that kind of thing, this is actually one of my go-tos. You know what? I actually don't see people actually talking about this palette, so... Yeah, actually it's not too bad. It's not as bad as I thought it would be, because I would be like clowning myself, like, why do you even get this palette? Because it's so light and everything, and uh, but it worked out. <laughs> This is one of my most recent eyeshadow palettes and this is the Kate Tokyo 3D Produce Shadow. And this is how it looks like. It's like a deep, mauve plummy kind of moment. And I got this when I was in Thailand earlier in January. So Kate Tokyo actually, surprise surprise, is already discontinued in Singapore. Like they pulled out. And I'm so upset because now I only can buy Kate products either online on Shopee or if not, I have to travel out of the country to get it. So. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to travel out purposely just to get Kate products. But uh, yeah, Kate is no longer available. So this makes it extra, extra special to me. And I want to, you know, take care of it, take good care of it. I think for travel, this is nice because it does have this, like, good transition shade as well. When I want it for a transition, or just all over the lids and just topped it off with this sparkly, purpley pink over here. I like this. It's not too bad. And um, yeah, it's very easy to use. I like it. I wish Kate was still in Singapore, honestly. And it's a little bit like a, the one who got away kind of moment. Another J Beauty quad. This is from Zizane. 
And this is the number five. Again, I'm sorry, I don't know how to read Japanese, but this is a number five. This is their line for the beige tone eyeshadow. And actually, when I travel to Bangkok, I actually brought this with me this time around. So this was the eyeshadow that I brought along. And you know what? It's very fast free to use. There isn't a flat matte, but the shades in here, they're more of like a satin. So they are a little bit softer, has a little bit of a sheen to it, but nothing too crazy. So it looks super natural on the eyes and I love the finish of this. We got more quads over here. This is actually from Silky Girl, Full Bloom. And this one is actually in number 4 Peony Flush. I'm not sure if this is still available, but my cousin gifted this to me. And honestly, this is... Silky Girl is a drugstore brand, and I'm a bit of a snob. Like, oh my god, how good can this be? You know, that kind of thing. I had that moment, and then afterwards, I'm like, yo, this is good. I'm not sure you guys can see it, but the flex in the silver, it goes from like a silver to a pinky reflex I'm not sure the camera is picking it up but there is a silver reflex when the light hits and i did not expect this this was probably i don't know eight nine ten singapore dollars really really affordable stuff and then you have this like peachy up pinkish kind of color which has a bit of a gold flip to it as well so i was really shocked to see this coming from silky girl i was like wow this is some nice quality stuff. I did not expect that. I got this Roman quad as well. The packaging is so cute. They did this in collaboration with Neon, Neon Mellow, if I'm not wrong. And <laughs> this was open, you know, in 2021. Um, so it's definitely way past its expiry date. But this is definitely a companion quad. I would never use this alone by itself because it's, again, just pure shimmer. But my favorite shade in this quad is this one over here. These are like taupey browns with like that silver transparent base to it. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a huge sucker for it. Doesn't this look like Urban Decay Space Cowboy? I love this. And it's so easy to like, you know, throw it on on top of any other eyeshadow palettes that I have. The other colors, I don't really use it that often, to be honest. I mean, they're kind of dried out a little bit. Not gonna lie, so I have to get in there and really like rub this is like the only matte shade but then there's like glitter in it so it's just like glitter everywhere i swear later when i take a shower it's gonna be glitter all over all over my body oh my gosh this is one of those copper chunkier glitters whoa i think this during like a party or a night out this will be really pretty i have this one single eyeshadow Sitting here from Hints, this is in number V002 Allure in Motion Velvet Matte. Now, when I did my personal color analysis, this single eyeshadow shade was recommended to me, which honestly, at that point of time, I was like, I'm going to buy whatever they say they recommend-ish. That is like something that I think I would like. So I got this. And honestly, I don't really use single shadows too, too often. And the fact that this actually has a mirror, it's Really like high quality, like the build and packaging itself. It's a bit of like that creamy finish to it. And it's just like a hue of purple. It even blends out so nicely on the back of my hand. So this was a good buy. I think having one shade is good enough. I wouldn't buy another shade of this. Now we have one more stack <laughs> of eyeshadow palettes from one particular brand. Um, it's from Raw Man, the brand, you know, that everybody loves. They make this a permanent item so yay to that and i think that this palette was revolutionary it was something different something that was never done before at least in the k-beauty game i think this palette would look great on winter season tones just because the fact that it means cool tone and it's so much deeper and darker while still maintaining the light tone over here and then it pushes all the way to a literal black matte over here. So it's from light to dark tonal value wise. So I think that's great. And this particular shade, this like... Reminds me of the Huda Beauty shadows, you know, that, that gemstone moment, that kind of thing. These two Roman palettes were part of the initial first release. So they released four shades. So I got this one, which is Rosebud Garden, as well as Mahogany Garden. So as you can tell, one that is very like pink, one is brown. I think these two, they lean pretty much quite warm tone. I feel like this will look really good on people with like autumn 
season tone, I feel. Still really like this palette just because how thoughtfully they laid out the shadows for like beginners or just like very easy to use fast read because this whole row is just your mattes on top of this as well as different textures of shimmers as well. I speak so highly about this eyeshadow palette because I genuinely could see how thoughtful Roman was when in terms of like placing the shadows and the different textures of shimmers. I think it was a really nicely laid out palette and just so good plus light to dark again. I always recommend this particular palette to people who are just starting off with makeup. Rosebud Garden for Rom and this is definitely like a rosy pink kind of eyeshadow palette. The color story pulls a little bit warmer and even though I'm like supposedly cool tone and what not have you, I actually really do enjoy using this particular eyeshadow palette and again it's very nicely laid out with all the different shades. I know a lot of people say that raw men eyeshadow palettes are kind of mid, which honestly, I can see why people say that. Generally, I love to consume K-Beauty. I use K-Beauty a lot, right? I try different brands and all that. I still feel that their palettes are just very easy to use. There are just some days where I really don't want to just use too much of my brain power, especially in the morning to think about how my eyeshadow, how should I do my eyeshadow, where should I place it, that kind of stuff. This layout just makes things so much easier for me day to day. This is actually my favorite Better Than palette, the Peony New York Garden. One of my favorite K-Beauty palettes also, because after I did my personal color analysis then and then in Korea, they recommended this for me, you know, like to go and get it. And I was like, okay, fine, let's go get it. So I bought it and honestly, first impressions, I was a bit like, Meh. I don't know how I feel about this, but after using it, for quite some time, I'm like, okay, I see. I see why. And I keep reaching for it as well because it's just so easy to use. Honestly, these two shimmers at the end over here, it's nice, but I don't really see any effect to it. I prefer other shimmers over these two over here. So mainly, I actually use this chunk over here for work. And it's just so easy, fast, free to use. I remember when I was in Korea, I was so lazy to just take out a blush or unbox a new blush. I actually used this pink shade over here as my blusher and it actually worked out. So that's really nice. And I just, I adore this palette so much and definitely one of my staple palettes in my collection. I still have the Light and Glitter Garden palette, the all glitter palette from Rom and, and this also was gifted to me as well. A lot of gifted eyeshadow palettes from friends and... I barely use this, to be honest. I think nowadays, I'm not so much of a glitter wearer, when I, especially when I go to work. I usually don't wear glitter. Maybe like a very wet, shimmery shadow. That's the best I can do. But glitters like these, these are a little bit too chunky for me personally. So, and yeah, nowadays, I don't really wear glitter. So, I will keep this on hand. But... I don't know how I feel about keeping this around because genuinely, I, I don't use this. Next up, we have the Catrice Pure Nude Eyeshadow Palette. This is another underrated drugstore palette. Not a lot of people talk about it and the shadows just perform so nicely. I think for under like what, 12, 13 Singapore dollars if I am not wrong. The shadows are definitely on the softer side. Definitely buttery smooth. The shimmers in this palette, not so much of that metallic wet shine, but they offer a sheen, softer kind of look. And I think this is a great palette for anybody who's even in a pinch, who just needs a decent eyeshadow palette. I think this is way, way, way above decent, by the way. This is high quality stuff for so cheap, affordable. If you ever get the chance to try this in stores and you've seen it, Please watch it, test it out for yourself because this is definitely such a pretty palette. Soft, pretty finish and you can easily turn this from like a day to night look because you have these that light tones over here. You have deeper, even this like metallic, oh my god, which, which finger is clean? <laughs> this deeper metallic shimmer over here. Again, it's a sheen so it's not going to be high shine, it's just a nice sheen to add some reflectiveness on your eyelids. Not too warm, not too cool. I think this is a perfect neutral nude palette, so... I highly recommend this. Feels Pro Eye Palette. This is in pink pairing. As you can see, very pink eyeshadow palette. And I did do a video on this. I did two eye looks with this, so I'll put a card up above. You can go and check that out. And this palette, 
is it a little repetitive, especially like what's going on over here? Yes, <laughs> I kind of agree. But one thing I do like about this new updated formula from Creo is that comparing it to the original Pro Eye palette, which is which is in this packaging over here, it's like rectangular. But this is a traditional like really like powder formula. This new formula, it kind of has this cool touch buttery smooth and there's really minimal fallout as compared to the to the old formula of the pro eye palette I'm not saying that the pro eye palette formula is bad but it just feels a little bit grittier in a sense that like it doesn't feel as smooth as compared to this new palette over here oh this one is old this is the etude house lavender land when this came out in 2018, I felt like this was also revolutionary. Let me know, have you guys seen an eyeshadow palette layout from Etude like this? Because you gotta be around for quite a while for you to see this original lineup. Actually, now that I think about it, in back in 2018, everybody was just raving, talking about warm tone eyeshadow palettes. This was purely cool tone. As you can see, this is truly just cool tone eyeshadows. Over here, they even did like a blue green moment. And honestly, I don't really use this eyeshadow palette because eh, it just wasn't something that I wanted to use back then. But now that now that I'm swatching it, it's very pretty. I totally wouldn't use this brown shade actually. It's like a it's the perfect brown that's a little bit toasty, but it's also a little bit cool tone, so it's not too warm in the sense. Ooh, do I have to bring this palette out again? Yeah, I have to do a one eyeshadow look with this because ooh, okay, that that purple is kind of a fail. This purple is also kind of a fail. Uh, this is alright. This is alright. This is this too is a bit. Uh. We have an eyeshadow palette from Pink Flash. This is me. What's this even called? Pro Touch eyeshadow palette in number four. I have no idea what shade this is in. I actually never touched this never used this i bought this because i think i wanted to use it for a video but i just never got around to it so are you guys interested in pink flash let me know maybe i could do a one eyeshadow look with this because this is honestly pulling very very warm and i just know deep down that after i do that one video with this maybe i probably would never reach for this so Maybe I should just pass this on to a friend. I don't know. We have this one from Marini. This is a Chinese indie brand. I bought it off Taobao here. And this is how it looks like. This is Sea Beauty. And this is one grungy, sparkly, wet, everything. Just pack a punch. I did do a video of this. Like three eyeshadow looks with one palette. I recommend you to check it out if you ever need like inspiration for like grungy looks like this as well. Thing is, after I did that video, I reached out for this palette maybe once or twice and ever since then, I never really used it. So, this is a good reminder to myself to actually reach out for the things that I actually do own and use. But, oof. Okay, I gotta use this palette again someday. On the note of Sea Beauty, this is from Kaleidos Makeup. I believe this is already discontinued, which breaks my heart so badly because these Fun little, I think they are like six pen, five pen shadows. So good. Oh, sorry. One, two, three, four, six, six pens, yes. Six pen eyeshadow palettes. And these came out back in like what, 2020, I believe. They were like revolutionary because not many brands were doing such a format or layout of eyeshadow palettes. And then you have a mirror over here and you have different color stories over here. It's just. So fun, so easy to travel and bring around. The olive tone thing was a huge trend because of melt makeup, how people are trying to get good olive eyeshadow. And Kaleidos definitely delivered when they came out with these eyeshadow palettes. You can see that I used some of it, but like, just think maybe it's like once or twice, maybe thrice at best. But other than that, I never really used it that much. Oh my god, so cute. I love the color story of this. This one pulls a little bit warmer. I remember this and this releasing together as a duo. And I bought both because I just thought that this was such like a cute, fun, neutral, but with a pop of color in a sense. Because 
these colors they kind of have this like white brightness in it and this yellow shade is so unique because i thought this would blend in really well my skin tone but it has a really obvious like a paste not say pastel it's just like cheese yellow this one is a luna lavender look at that that is that's stunning it looks like a typical like typical taupe brown but then on the skin it translates to kind of like that purpley undertone to it look at that look at that, that. oh somebody please remind me to pull out these shadows maybe i should just do an ig reel maybe a short or something just using these palette because they're so pretty i am kind of beating up myself on like not using these eyeshadow palettes because they are so stinking pretty like what the heck okay so yes Reminder to self, use these eyeshadow palettes, please. I'm gonna be honest, I've been sitting here for quite a while. The sun has literally gone down, the sky is dark. I've been yapping about eyeshadow palettes for quite some time. And I think my throat kind of hurts a little bit. So we're gonna stop here for today. Let me know if you want to see part 3. We still have part 3, guys, of my eyeshadow palette collection. I feel like this is, this is a long one, I feel. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe down below. I would love to see you guys around. And make sure to watch part 1 if you haven't already. I'll put the card over here. And I will see you guys over there.